Open source, SaaS, custom built software. What's the difference? And which should you go for? Wading into the world of software for the first time can be pretty daunting. You're surrounded by unfamiliar concepts, all of which apparently have to be represented by a catchy three-letter acronym, be it ERP, PIM, CRM, DAM, CMS, WT. Then, once you finally get an idea about the different software and tools that you need for your tech stack, you're faced with another dilemma. Do you go with a SaaS company, an open source version? Do you hire a team to develop your own version in-house? If this is all starting to sound a bit stressful, don't worry. Mikey from Plytix here, and in this video, we're gonna be exploring each of these solutions in depth and looking at the key differences between them in order to help you choose the best way to implement the software you need for your business. Let's open this discussion with open source. Open source refers to software for which everyone is free to access and edit the source code. Being able to play with that source code gives you a lot of options. If you're not familiar with how software works under the surface, the code is basically what makes it work, and editing or adding to that code will change how the program runs, or give it new capabilities, kind of like when people's genetic code mutates in X-Men. Exciting stuff, right? Obviously. Working with that code takes specialist knowledge though, so you're gonna need to find someone with coding skills if you do want to go in and start changing things. After all, we all remember what happened when Magneto started trying to make his own mutants in the first X-Men movie. Spoilers, it did not go well. That being said, even if you're not a mad scientist, sorry, computer scientist, there are a bunch of free open source programs out there that are super useful and that don't need any tweaking for you to be able to use them. If you're tired of QuickTime, for example, VLC Media Player is an excellent alternative that can handle pretty much any type of media file you throw at it. For aspiring artists and designers who want to work with Photoshop, but avoid the hefty price tag, GIMP is an open source version that actually has a lot of the same features. Similarly, if you're in need of an office suite to edit documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and so on, then LibreOffice, a successor of OpenOffice, is an excellent option. And of course, we can't talk about open source alternatives without mentioning Linux, the most popular open source operating system out there. In fact, there are more professional developers currently using Linux-based operating systems than there are using Mac OS. Here's a question for you though. What about Google Chrome? Open source or not, what do you reckon? If you said yes to it being open source, sorry, guess again. While Google Chrome is free to use, their source code isn't available to the general public, so it's not actually open source. Mozilla Firefox, on the other hand, is, as anyone and everyone can see their code and edit their own copy if they so wish. Okay, so now on to the million dollar question or possibly the zero dollar question, depending on the answer. Is open source software really free? I mean, it kind of sounds too good to be true, right? Well, the short answer is that it depends. Helpful, I know. In the examples we just mentioned, VLC, GIMP and the rest, yes, it really is free and it's pretty easy for anyone who wants to, to download and use it. On top of that, in a lot of cases, there's also an online community of other users who can provide advice and support and sometimes even their own homemade patches and code that you can use too. Isn't it nice when people are actually, well, nice on the internet? In a lot of cases, open source companies actually bank on this niceness from their users, as a lot of true open source software producers rely on a donation model in order to cover their costs. Think that screen that pops up when you install Adblock on your browser. Things get a bit more complicated, however, when the software in question gets a bit more niche. In the world of e-commerce, for example, unless you go for something super basic, you're unlikely to find an open source ERP or PIM system that you can just download and start using with your store straight away. Given its complicated technical nature, you're gonna need to invest time and money getting it up and running with your store, whether you use your in-house team or hire outside help. Fun fact, that's actually how some other companies that produce open source software get their revenue by helping people set it up and or maintain it for a fee. Then you have open core options, which use the freemium model, where they let you access a limited amount of their source code for free, but then charge you for premium functions and features, and generally don't give you access to the code for those bits. Right, let's move on to custom builds. Custom built software is exactly what it sounds like. Software that's fully customized and built according to your exact needs and specifications. I have to say, this option sounds pretty cool in theory. To give you an example, imagine if you could have your own personalized music player, 
where you could tell it exactly what playlists you want to see when you open the app at certain times of day or in certain locations, or remove features that you don't use. Personally, I'm not super into podcasts, so I'd be up for hiding that feature. But I'd love it if I could tell Spotify to automatically show me energetic, motivational playlists when I open it in the gym. Hey, maybe that way I'd actually go to the gym. Who knows? So why don't we all do this and each have our own software and apps designed and tailored according to our exact needs? I'm pretty sure you can guess the answer to this one. Money! I don't know about you, but personally, I couldn't code my way out of a paper bag. Which means if I want my own lovely personalized iTunes knockoff, then that means I've got to find someone who can make it for me and then pay them to do so. I mean, I've met a lot of very friendly programmers over the years, but something tells me they're not going to want to do something like that for free. The cost of designing and implementing custom software can be astronomical, which means for most users an out-of-the-box option as in one that already exists and is ready for you to immediately start using, is a much more sensible choice. So I'll be sticking with Spotify for now, at least until I win the lottery. But if I'm not paying for custom-built software, who is and why? Well, there are various reasons why people might go for custom-built software, but generally we're talking about big corporations with very specific needs. Depending on how specific your needs are, it could be that the software simply doesn't exist yet, so it's either custom build it or go without it. It could also be that while software does already exist for your niche, it's not customizable enough for your purposes. So you'd rather have something that you've built yourself from the ground up in order to be able to design every aspect based on your precise specifications. One more scenario could be that you're working in a large scale tech heavy company that already has the resources and staff available who can build this software for you without breaking a sweat. If that's the case, sure. Why not keep it in-house? Finally, we have SaaS. That's S-A-A-S, or Software as a Service, which refers to software that you use on a subscription basis. That means we're generally talking either using the free version, either on a trial basis or with adverts or with more limited capabilities, or paying every month, quarter, year, and so on for access to a premium version with more functions and features. Chances are you're already familiar with this type of software for day-to-day -day life, as some typical examples would be companies like Netflix, Zoom, Spotify, Google Workspace, Apple Music, or if you're cool enough to work in e-commerce, maybe even Plitix. You don't own it, you just get to use it. And you can't edit anything apart from the settings that the company lets you adjust. That's really the key difference between this and open core software. Sure, both might follow the freemium model, but while with open core you get access to some of the source code, with SAS, you don't. That's not necessarily a bad thing though, as because the code is closed and can't be modified, it can actually make it more secure. Think about it. If you were trying to build an uncrackable safe inside an impenetrable vault, would you then leave the plans lying around where just anyone could see them? That leads us pretty neatly onto the next big question about this topic. And in fact, maybe the biggest question that needs to be answered. Which one's best for you? Open source, SaaS, or custom built? Again, you're gonna love our helpful answer here. It depends. Custom built, honestly, is probably the easiest to rule out straight away in the majority of cases, as unless you've got some very specific needs and or unlimited resources, it tends not to be the most cost efficient choice. I mean, why spend so much time and money building something from scratch if there's already software for that function out there? So really, the main debate for most people is open source versus SaaS. And that's what we're gonna dive into now. Let's have a look at some pros and cons for each, starting with open source. Obviously, in the case of software for typical day-to-day -day uses, the fact that some open source software is totally free is a pretty big plus. If you're techy enough to know how to do it, then being able to edit the code and customize your software is pretty cool too. As for the cons, they really come into play when you start looking at more technical software, as that's when you're gonna need to start investing time and or money to get your supposedly free software into working order. In fact, the long-term costs can be higher than those of SaaS software in some cases. If you're using this software for professional purposes, you've also got to bear in mind that with open source options, you're going to be responsible for everything about the software. So we're talking maintenance, compliance with security regulations, updating it as and when necessary, everything. With SaaS, on the other hand, all that responsibility is taken off your hands. 
You just have to keep paying for your subscription and whoever you're getting your software from will take care of the rest. Think of it like renting an apartment. Okay, you don't own the building, but you also don't have to stress out if the boiler breaks or if the locks need changing or if the place needs a coat of paint. Those are all jobs for whoever you're renting from. Continuing this analogy, another plus could be that you only need to pay for the apartment software for as long as you're using it. So long as you don't get tied into a contract that says you need to give five years notice to vacate the premises or anything silly like that. Still though, whether you're renting somewhere or something, you're naturally gonna lose a degree of control and customization. So if you have very particular requirements, you will need to make sure you're choosing the right option for you. Preferably one where the owner is open to suggestions about ways to improve the property based on what their clients need. So at the end of the day, yep, it depends. It depends on what software you're looking for, how specific your needs are, how much time and money you're prepared to invest in getting your tech set up, and a whole bunch of other factors. I would say though, while open source can be great for mainstream, simpler applications, for more technical software, SaaS is generally gonna be the quickest and easiest option. It can take years to fully develop specialized software in some cases. So why wouldn't you go for an option that's already been developed by someone else instead? And there we have it. Hopefully you're now a little more familiar with these different software options and feeling a bit more confident about making the right decision for you and your business. If you found this video helpful, we'd love it if you gave us a like. And to be the first to know when we post more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the Plitix channel and ring that bell. See you next time. You can ring my bell. Ring my bell. Oh, my it's off key. Bell.